Hello, testing. Can you hear me? Yep, all good here. Awesome. How's it going since we last spoke? Good. Awesome. How many? Um, did you book any calls from that? No, I had I had a couple of conversations going. Um, one of the uh, one of the people that it was I was interacting with is actually a new to the business financial advisor. Um, so he is, is working with a firm, I uh, can't think of New Mountain or something. He's working with a firm. He's looking, he has a couple of candidates on the line, um, but we're gonna have a chat on Thursday to see if going forward, there's any opportunity to work together with his new clients. I thought that was better than nothing. Um, I was just checking LinkedIn as, as the call went live actually, but there was, there was no, um, there were a few others dead in the water you know, when you get to the point oh, who does your bookkeeping oh actually my husband spouse i have one on staff you know that kind of thing um but it was it was a good practice it was a good practice well, awesome so that's really good so yeah because i know we had a couple of conversations out of all the people that you messaged or that you had on your connection list how many of those people um did you message so far um i reached out to all the people in the u.s it was like 110 Cool. And I guess kind of copied and pasted. Yeah. I had, awesome. I had, um, let me see, hold on. Notifications. Just checking my messages while we speak here again. So I had, one, two, three, four, five, six responses. Oh, actually, one so, one has come in recently. Yeah. Awesome. All right, cool. Yeah. So I'll get back to these after the call. Okay. Awesome. Okay, cool. So then what we're gonna do next is um, how many of the homework steps were you able to kind of get through? So I did the um, I re redid my LinkedIn last night. I revamped it based on Eileen. Um, I sent you my intro. Mm -hmm. the um or shared it with you by email shared, shared a link mm -hmm. with you from sparky hippo and that was let me see what else and i was just watching the um where's my document i was just watching the the um beginning of the six um figure sales videos so i did i just watched the intro then i was just watching eileen's um vet proposal on zoom she she's very easy to um underestimate isn't she eileen hmm. she um like what she had like what she there, there are a few things i would do you know differently from my personality but I, it's a really robust proposal yeah the proposal does um does most of the work yeah 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 and it's funny because i'm not particularly i mean she has a couple of nice little um images in there which i thought oh that's a nice touch because mine's like well hers is heavy on the words because it needs to be but that that was a nice little touch a couple of the little images she had in there it was just fine okay. i think so i'm looking through your um your letter if you could um on the the cpa letter add a um add a picture okay so this one didn't have it but the bottom one did um yeah yeah will do All right, cool. Yeah, so I'll just add a picture to that. And then what we can do is, um, you're, I assume you're already in a bunch of like Facebook groups, right? It's like business owners. Hmm. 
Mm, then the computer froze. Hey, Lizzie Testings, can you hear me? Hey. Yeah, I think the thing dropped. Hey, Lizzie, how are you doing? Hello, I'm good. Hey. You? Congratulations on the new cleanups. Yeah, some small ones, but uh, making progress, so that's good. That's good. Yeah, and um, tell tell me a little bit more about like how you got them. Was um, just through Instagram? Um, yeah. So one of them was through Instagram. She messaged me and was like, "Hey, um, because I just started following people, you know, following them and sending them a message. Hey, how's it going?" Um, and she just reached out to me saying, Hey, you know, I, I saw you on Instagram and wanted to reach out and see if you could count me out. I'm overwhelmed, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then hopped on a call with her. It was a quick 15 minute call and she was pretty adamant about just like getting started and getting the ball rolling. So, um, sent her a quote of how much the cleanup would be for a year. She's a really small account. She only had like 100 transactions for the year really small the year wow yeah okay. uh, but she's doing i'm doing her cleanup and then we're gonna have uh she's continuing services uh after that for a monthly contract That's good. and then That's the other That's cleanup good. i got the other cleanup i got was um they were actually a previous client that i had set up their books back in February of last year and just set him up, sent her on her way. And then I reached out to her again and was like, hey, just wanted to check back, see how it's going, see if you were you know, able to keep up with the books, how are your books looking? And she messaged back and was like, yeah, I didn't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Awesome. So my question is, so now that, that you're kind of um, in flow this week, um, how many more Instagram connection requests are you sending per day? Um, I'm kind of just, I've been so busy this week that I haven't really been on, um, um, but I'm trying to do at least like a hundred a week, you know, just finding local clients, trying to just follow them, send them a message, follow, send a message, follow, send a message, like just over and over and over. Awesome. Okay. So about a hundred a week. That's not bad. Um, if you get more time, if you could like expand that or, or what you could do is you could, um, set your searches for just bigger types of companies. Okay. Right. Because you, you know, it's generally going to be a numbers game. So if you're going to be not having as high a volume and it's a numbers game, we wanna make sure that once that number actually falls, it's a big person. Okay. So that's what I'd go. So like, if you see like, if you have the option between a life coach versus like someone who owns like, you know, a nonprofit or a construction company, mm -hmm. we're gonna go with the construction only. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, I did awesome. have a question that I've been thinking about this week. Um, yeah. How would you go about raising, cause now raising prices, cause now I have this, you know, the pricing calculator that you gave me, but I have a client specifically that is on hourly and they've been with me since I started a year ago and I was charging them $40 an hour but I've had them for a year and now I want to raise the prices on her. She's getting really needy. <laughs> so, like, I swear I have like 10 emails from her a day, a day, like, uh -huh. and you know, so I'm running the clock every time she emails me, of course, you know, but 
I don't know if I should raise the hourly or try and switch her to, you know, see what comes up with the pricing calculator and try to switch over to that. Okay. So a couple of things you can do. Uh, number one, so you said you've been with her for more than a year? A year now. I started her last January. Okay. And then how many um, hours per week does she give you? Um, I think total for the month, I only do, I have like 10 hours, but I, I don't reach very many hours. This month is a little bit more. It's going to be more than 10 hours because she decided last minute she wanted me to send out 1099s and all this other stuff. And she's like transitioning to payroll. But when it gets down to actually doing her books, it doesn't take more than 10 hours a month. Yeah. Is she, do you think that she might end up growing larger in the near coming future? Um, I mean, she's, I think she's kind of stable where she's at. I know she's going to try and sell the company in the next two years or so. Um, but she's been around for six years. So she's kind of where she's going to be, I think. So you can do a couple of things. So have you ran it through the pricing calculator already to kind of see what it would be on a monthly? I have, and it's like almost double what I've been charging her now, almost which is double. also what's making me realize that I'm way undercharging her. Yeah. So with that one, if it's been a year, you might see about having a conversation with her about raising it. So I would probably do about 1.5 what you're charging right now. What so I'm sorry? The pricing okay. calculator, 1.5 times what you're charging her. Because if the okay. pricing calculator is saying double, it might be hard to go from like 400 to 800 dollars a month without having yeah. like an explanation for it. Right. So you might want a 1.5 exit. Okay. So if, if it's supposed to be $800 a month, maybe do like $600 a month, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And the next time you have that discussion, maybe six months from now, you can raise it up to where it's supposed to be. Okay. Ba based on this person's personality and your relationship with them, how frivolous are they with money? Do they just like spend it willy nilly? Um. Hi, not really. She really is good about just like she just a wedding service and they just like she pays her officiants. She pays she buys, you know, reception supplies. She does kind of go willy nilly through like her personal expenses, running her personal expenses through the bank account, through the business account. Um, yeah. I, I guess what I'm trying to ask is like does she have the personality type where you can just raise it to the price that you want to charge? Or is she kind of like a frugal person where it's going to be like, oh, well, I need to look at this and need to think, factor this thing in. I need to factor this thing in. I think that if I raised it to like a reasonable diff or like a not a, like a sticker shock kind of difference, um, mm -hmm. she would be just like, okay, yeah, that's understandable. Like if I was thinking like if I went from charging her $40 an hour to $45 an hour, she'd be like, oh, okay, no big deal. Like I get it. Yeah. But I, I was personally thinking at least 50. Yeah. Was kind of the number I have in my head. Um, but even then 50 times 10 is only $500. So you're still less than 1.5, mm -hmm. you know, charging it. Um, probably, probably $50 would be like, like the goal that we're always trying to do, like our minimum goal. Because if you get 40 hours a week at $50, that's 100K per year. Mm -hmm. Right? So if we can shoot for 50, that'd be really good. Okay. Now in order yeah, to I land on a 50. That's what I'm going to have to shoot for is 50 because I think just she's getting out of hand. <laughs> yeah. So, she, she, so It's kind of a battle because she wants, she doesn't want to make up her mind. She'll be like, oh, can you start doing payroll for me? But then I'll be like, okay, let me do the payroll. Then she turns around and is like, oh, no, 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 I'm going to have somebody else do it. So I feel like I need to set some like more boundaries with her to be like, look, if you're going to, you need to really figure out the game plan here of who's going to do this and who's not going to, you know, it's, I don't know, it's getting, maybe it's just because so, it's January and this is like the craziest month that everybody's stressed and freaking out and has a million questions, but. So, <laughs> so a couple of things you can do. 
So if you know that she has extra service that she wants, it's going to take, you know, more hours, it might make sense to go hourly. How I would go about the hourly discussion is to overshoot how much you want to actually make. So 50 is our goal. Maybe we can start off at like 60 or maybe 65. She'd be like, oh, it's way too high. Then you can negotiate down and stair steps until you get to 50. Mm. Okay. Okay. Second thing is it sounds like you might need to have a re-enrollment call with her. So when I say a re-enrollment call, what I would be thinking was like, hey, why don't we go out to lunch maybe like 15, 20 minutes, maybe on like a Saturday and have a new sales call and say, okay, so these are the new services that I think we need to add. And blah, 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 see what the game plan is, see if you can add on some more services. So when we have our higher rates, we can be able to get paid more and actually get a little bit closer to that number that we're shooting for. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does that kind of make I'm sense? Kind of, yeah, that makes sense. Cause I, yeah, I do need to have a phone call with her to really determine like what is going on. Cause she's just changing a lot of things in her business recently, but if I wanted to just kind of do a flat, um, cause I'm also wanting to do just flat rates across the board now with all of my clients. Um, so I think maybe I'll look into the, what, like what you said, the 1.5. I would, you could actually do both. Like there is no right or wrong answer. You can say, okay, so there's two options that I see and that most of my clients have done. We gotta do this, which is $600 a month, or we can do this. Okay. And then she'll be able to choose whether she wants to go the hourly route or whether she wants to go the flat route. If she wants to go the hourly route, you know, 65, 60, 55, 50. Or if she wants to go the flat rate, oh, we can just do that because, you know, that's I'm, I'm expecting my business to grow. And this is going to make sure that, you know, you can stay with me for the long term, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a little bit easier when they're already your client because you can kind of have a little bit more weight. Mm -hmm. And we can see about influencing them. Whenever she said that like she wants you to do payroll, but then she changed her mind, is that generally in a phone call? Or is that like an email that she says that? Email. It's usually email. email. So I'll like follow yeah. up and she'll I'll follow up and say, okay, just to confirm and make it very clear, like, all right, we're confirming that I'm not in charge of your payroll. So if that doesn't get run this week, that's not my problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, you're confirming that this is what is going on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that, that's how I'd handle that conversation. Mm -hmm. What kind of okay. industry is, it, is this client or what industry? I'm sorry. What industry is this client? Wedding services. Oh, you already said that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Can you hear me or is my audio kind of quiet? Uh, I can hear you. All right, cool. Awesome. Does that fully answer your questions? Yes, thank you. That was awesome. my issue of the week. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a good issue to have. Yeah. So, Joanna, were you able to um, go in and find a good picture to use? One second. I think you're muted, so I can't quite hear you. It would help if I unmuted myself. Um, yeah. yeah, so I have the one that I've been using on pretty much everything that's on my various profiles now, which I can add um, cool. to the CPA letter. Yeah, so that's uh, an easy the, fix. Yeah, not to the CPA letter, but to the- By um, the intro letter. Yeah. And then if you yeah. could, let's post that intro letter into um, about five different Facebook groups per week. Okay. If you can preferably do it across industries, that'll be really, really helpful. Okay. For example, if you make like one post inside of a, a group for like coaches and another one in like therapists and another one in like construction workers and another one in um, XYZ company, you can post in a lot more groups. But we like to do about four per industry, four okay. posts per industry. Yeah. What um can you give me some direction? I mean, obviously I can I can look on Facebook for construction company groups, but like what what am I looking for? Am I just gonna type in construction or is it a specific phrase or is there some better than yeah. others? I mean, yeah, so a couple of things. 
So there's, there's two resources we have to help you out with that. The first one is I can walk you through like what we're looking for, but then also inside of those training modules, there's actually a video that says how to go and find niche groups and like what ah, to do okay. inside of there as well. Yeah. All right, I have a look at that. Cool. Um, now keep in mind though, in order of which one delivers the easiest results for most people, it generally goes LinkedIn, Instagram, then Facebook groups in, in terms of like ease and direct to clients. Okay. For Facebook group, we're generally going to be just posting an introduction posts and then seeing who bites on it and then kind of going from there. Okay. okay cool. And and did so, you have any, um, other than the adding the photo, did you have any other feedback on the content of the intrepid? Okay. No. Yeah, I, I wasn't sure how to be, how, um, how much to put in there from a personal perspective. I, I, I took your point about, um, you know, you want to give people a lot of opportunity to connect with you by having a range of bits and pieces that people, like, oh yeah, that that's like me, that's like me. But I didn't want to put too much in there, um, you know. Yeah, okay, good, that's good. So I'll get that, I'll do that this evening. Yeah, like, like a lot of this stuff is not about it being right or wrong. Yeah, it's just like different degrees of effectiveness and like yeah. different variations, because I mean, we're going to be sharing these same these same posts, like probably once every six weeks into the same group. So okay. we'll, we'll just vary it up just just a slight bit each time. OK. OK, cool. cool. Awesome. And yeah, we can talk about which groups to go and join. Um, when I'm thinking of a group. The first, actually, let's take a step back. So when we're thinking about who do we want to talk to, who is going to be our ideal client? I'm always looking for who's already hiring contractors, right? Mm -hmm. So an easy one is construction. Construction, personally, for me, is my favorite industry. There are yeah, some drawbacks. When, when I was originally thinking of niching, I... Um, that was one of my go-tos was construction companies um, for that very reason. They're in the habit already of outsourcing everything, right? And they, they, they're, it's, they're okay with that. They're not used to holding everything to themselves. Um, yeah. But one of, the, um, one of the drawbacks is, and I don't know if this is in the US as well, is that the, the CIS, the, um, they have a specific industry schemes that I wasn't familiar with. Um, so that would be, um, if, if that is the case, or if it's just you know straightforward bookkeeping with a couple of tweaks, and that's fine. There's a couple yeah, of tweaks, yeah. Money. Yeah. A couple of tweaks, but generally, generally for me, my thing is always we get our foot in the door and get the money, figure the rest out later. I'm with you there. I'm yeah, with like, you there. like a lot of people, like when they're starting, like they're really afraid that if they don't do this perfect job when yeah. the person comes on like they're just going to get fired they're not going to make any money um give me one second i forgot to live stream this thing and they think like it's going to be the end of the world oops that's the wrong one you don't want that oh, God. <clears throat> oops okay no live stream today we're on the wrong profile but okay <laughs> cool so <laughs> But okay, so when it comes to cons with construction workers, they are a little bit crass in their language. Yeah, well, that's, Can I'm not shy about that. Jerk said times. <laughs> yeah. Um, but when it comes to like pros, this is the main reason. They are so yeah. loose with money. <laughs> they don't respect it. They don't care about it. We have guys um, in the I guess because the they always know they'll get more, right? Yeah, especially when you're getting like, you know, half a million dollar loans per property for yeah. the basic. That's only like the, the residential side. That's right. That's yeah. right. This is money. Um, bad with details. That's a good thing. Yeah. Are it is. technologically. Yeah. Weak. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Need payroll if you offer it yeah can also do admin services as well yeah 
Okay. Another good industry. So here's another industry that I, that I really like as well. Non-profit. Yeah, I've heard um, not, you mention that a few times. Yeah, not necessarily churches. A lot of people, when I say nonprofit, think I'm talking about like churches. Those, those can be kind of hit or miss. Um, pros of these, high growth. Cash infusions. Yeah. For night, and um, hard hard to determine who's gonna grow. Mm. Do they tend right, to have so, a clear um, structure as to who signs off on stuff or who makes decisions? Um, it depends. Like sometimes that could be a con to sometimes they. Mm. We need to run it by the board. Mm. Sometimes they run it by the board. Um, can get trapped in poverty. Mm. Right. Because like, like with yeah, never enough, never enough. Yeah. Well, well, not even that. It's like nonprofits are like they suck and they don't make any money. And it's just like, you know, they're like a starving artist or they hit they hit a 500, a million plus yeah. because they have really good donors because they get good grants. So it's 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 not a huge amount of like in between. Mm. They either have budget or they don't have budget. Okay. Right. And for the ones that don't necessarily have budget, they sometimes get stuck in that zone for way longer than what they have to be, especially if they don't know how to run a business. They're just someone who like just feels passionate about something. Yeah, bleeding heart tight. Yeah. Yeah. But then you get other ones where it's like they're making huge amounts of money. They're changing the world. They're feeding people in multi multiple countries. So it's just like there's, there's just a big, yeah. big jump. Um. Another one, another good example would be like solar. Solar. Similar to construction. Another good one is staffing. Staff, staffing is hit or miss. Hits or miss for Bryce. Great for Melissa uh, Hilliard. <laughs> Like that's, she loves getting clients like that, right? And, and she generally gets really high value coach in place like that because they're used to hiring out employees because they're used to hiring out temporary people like because they're used to doing it. I used to think oh, for so a long you, time- when you say they, staffing, you're like resource or temp agencies. Is that what you mean? Yeah, it can be temp agencies. It can be, um, yeah, about temp agencies are, are, are pretty much. Um, another one is like investment companies. Real estate investors are another good one. Um, yeah, these are who I'd actually be going after if I had no other choice. Um, another okay. good one is their practices. We'll say they're called okay. actually therapy practice. Therapy. Well, this is who I'd be going after. Okay. I'll do another um LinkedIn search and see who who um responds and at the same time look for groups for those on Facebook. Have you um the, the one thing that I recommend is, is as you're going down your um your instructions list 
then go and get sales navigator because then when you type in construction you can do i think i'm logged into my account on this profile but let me see you can do a way deeper search okay i'll do that this evening okay so for like example this is what sales navigator looks like for me And I can keep filtering down. Just can you make it bigger? Um, on the top of the screen. Oh, so I can see the notepad, but I can only see the messenger scripts right down. Oh, below. that's the. Yeah, there we go. I had my screen paused. Can you see it now? Yeah. Okay. All right, so you can go and choose based on like who you actually want to speak to, like who are the top dogs. Uh, I think you say that that the states that you have either known of or that you have a close um, relationship to is you say Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah, probably be my first bet. What about you? Said your your company is um um registered in Delaware. Yeah. Does it have like a physical, like do you get like a PO box in Delaware or something too? Um, yeah, the, the registered agent does, yeah, is a proper address. Oh. There's 6,000 people right there now. Oh yeah, that's Georgia. nice pickings, yeah, yeah. All right, even if you want to do I'll someone like busy the- for a bit. Right? Yeah, even if you all and want would to do you, someone- Would you go for the top dog in each company or would you look for- um, like you go for the owner, I'm thinking, right? You wouldn't look for, I don't know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't yeah. reach out if they were worked for. Yeah. So and so. That's why having like this seniority level tab is going to be really, really key. Oh, I see. Ah, right gotcha. You okay. Partner, even business partner. I mean, because even inside of like, what was, um, how far away are you from London? Um, a good three hours, three and a half hours. Okay. Uh, where's where's the next um, major city near you? The, the next biggest city to me is Bristol or Bath. I can't spell Bristol. Bristol. O L. Yep. And Bath, like bathtub. Cardiff is close to me too. They're about an hour and a half away. So a lot less in there, but still about, I see, no, it's about 21,000. So that's actually more than Atlanta had because Atlanta's just a city. Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Yeah, so you have tons of options. It might be easiest at first if you go after someone who's in the UK. Okay. Um, just because they're down the street. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's also why we talked about maybe having two LinkedIn accounts. You can have one LinkedIn account attacking like the UK, one yeah. LinkedIn account attacking the United States, and then you can have the best of both worlds. Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah. Does that kind of answer your questions about who to go after and what we're really looking yeah. for? Yeah. Okay. And then also where to put kind of our, our focus in terms of outreach. Yeah, yeah. Let me make a Google document real quick so I can share it with you. Okay. Lizzie, do you have any questions about this part too? Um, no, I no, I. It's just um, you know, getting uh, for, the for, getting for, for, the. For Lizzie. Oh, sorry. No, I'm good on this part. Thank you. Oh, what what are your favorite industries that you go after? Uh, I really enjoy salons. If I can, you know, book with them, I love working with them. Um, I do remember uh, working with a construction company when I was working at firms, and they were always pretty good to work with because they were just really, like you mentioned, they're just throwing money everywhere. They're like, "Yeah, sure, here, do all my stuff, and call it a day." Um, yeah. Those, but salons for sure are probably 
my one of my favorites. Okay. Wait, what kind of salons? You said hair salons? Uh, yeah, like hair salons. Okay. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay. Um, hmm. Then, wh where are you located again? You said Texas? Yeah, I'm in Austin, Texas. Okay. Cool. Yeah, hair salons are, are nice. Their books are fairly, you know, straightforward. Um, and a lot of the time, or, you know, all of them really, they use kind of a, a different software where they receive all their payments through, you know, they, that you can just log into, makes everything super clean cut and easy. Okay. Lances, LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Mailers. Direct relationships. The one thing, the one thing too, Joanna, that I, I would stress above anything else is if you can go back to your past relationships and get like the CPA or chartered accountants or anyone to let you subcontract, like I can't stress this enough. Yeah. This is the first thing we always do. Um, cool. Yeah, I am. Well, prior to the call, my my task this evening was to go through all my Facebook connections and see who had businesses and then reach out to them. Um, okay. Off the top of my head, I only know one target accountant, but she's always worked for a firm, maybe two. But, I'll, I, you know, I just don't know what people do, to be fair. So I'll go and have a look. Yeah, and remember when it comes to like the direct relationships, any person is game. So for example, um, this one this one lady who came to the program, she got her first higher ticket client from an ex, an ex, not even ex boyfriend, but just like someone she went on like a date with like three years ago, and then hit the okay. person back up. I was like, hey, what, what are you doing nowadays? And he goes, oh, I, I run this like real estate investing thing, and then he pays her like three grand a month. Oh, it sounds good. Oh. So, Cool. Awesome. All right, cool. Any other questions real quick? No, that's it from me. Okay. Can we go through some of your, um, I saw you come off mute, Lizzie, anything? I do have something. Um, so I had another, I have another client. They are looking to, okay. So, so he's kind of a lot. He's, I've known the family for a long time. They're, um, they own a bunch of restaurants. So when I started working with them, they only had like two restaurants. Now they have seven. They're gonna open an eighth one. They're just nonstop growing. Um, they have a CPA now. I've been doing their books in-house, just like he likes to have double of everything. Um, but they're tired of their CPA and he told me he wants to fire their CPA. So my plan is to tell him to just let me do all the accounting for all the restaurants, pay me to do it, you know, properly give me everything that I need, you know, get, give me the reports that the current CPA has because the current CPA had been doing them since day one, which was four years ago now. And I only started doing it in-house a year ago. Um, but if I can convince him, which I should be able to, uh, to let me take over the, the accounting, all the accounting for all the restaurants. And I'm trying to think of like how to charge him for that. Do I want to go in as a W-2 employee? Do I want to stay as a contractor? Um, because each restaurant every month, their, their statements are like 400 transactions, 500 transactions a month. Yeah. And that's times seven restaurants. Wow. And so there's a couple of things we can do. How much do you currently charge them actually? Uh, right now they give me $400 a month per restaurant. 400 per month per restaurant? Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's and then 2,800 a month. 
which is way, I mean, if I, if I took over kind of all the major, all the accounting, I would definitely need, they for sure should be paying more. <laughs> Again, yeah. this is like another one that I started when I went off on my own that I didn't really know what I was doing. So. Okay. So a couple of ways you can do this. Um, how much, how much more time do you have in your week right now? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I, to be honest, do you, I don't know. <laughs> do you so, have like, like, like a, do you have like I a do friend 40 or, hour or week, like, basically? Yeah. Um, I start, I need to be better about how I'm tracking my time. I have started tracking my time because a lot of clients, I wasn't tracking my time when I charge them, you know, just a set price every month and I didn't have to track what their hours. Um, mm -hmm. So I definitely, I definitely think I still have an extra 40 hours in there for the month that I could fill up. So the reason why I ask, cause like, do you have like a friend who maybe can help you with bookkeeping stuff? I actually do. Um, I have somebody that wants just kind of like a, a one day a week side job um, that I said, you know, maybe we can work something out where you come in on, on Saturday and they only want to do it Saturdays. So I'm saying like, you can come into my office on Saturdays and kind of do the tedious things that I don't really want to do. Um, and I can show you how to do it that are simple, you know, like just data entry or scanning receipts or something, you know, something simple. Um, the reason why I'm asking this, so this is a slightly different question. Um, so let me say probably what the goal is. So the, the goal would be to see if we can suck up as many hours as possible, charge hourly, but then not have to you do the work. Mm -hmm. So if this lady or this person or your, your friend only wants to work one day a week, that that kind of isn't the best for oh. what we're trying to do. Mm -hmm. Versus, hmm. So if they give you all seven, like, will they, how likely do you think they'd be to give you all seven, even if the CPA like stays? Well, they're, they're going to get, they're firing the CPA. They don't want the CPA anymore. It's not working out with her. He doesn't like her. She's never responsive. Um, so what I'm thinking is I take on all the bookkeeping and accounting fully. And then when it comes time for, you know, anytime they need taxes or something done, then they just have their tax professional or their CPA, a new CPA that they can go to that I just send them the reports and everything they need. Yep. Okay. So, so here, so here's the thing. Okay. So when's the next time you can speak to this restaurant, either owner or the person who's in charge of like, you know, this decision? Um, they just, uh, today yeah they just texted me and said if asked if i can come down there today oh, okay so so this is very important okay so for the next like week and a half next month you might have to sacrifice a little bit of um free time okay okay so what you could do i'm generally trying to shoot for whichever one's higher so 400 times seven is 2800 dollars a month um is that the amount of money that you kind of want or what is the amount of money that you'd want from this like in an ideal world i think that it might like timing wise and i've kind of ran their numbers through the pricing calculator i mean each one should be let me see what did i do earlier at least each restaurant should be at least almost a thousand dollars a month <laughs> with how much work they're they're doing because it's like 400 plus transactions, sometimes like anywhere from 400 to 500 transactions. They only have one bank account. They don't, they have zero loans, zero credit cards, super simple. Um, they have a ton of receipts and checks that I have to go through constantly to label and scan and match, which takes up a lot of time. I think each restaurant, honestly, to do the full bookkeeping for them, takes about 16 hours each month for each restaurant. I guess you could always get your Saturday or whoever person to do all the scanning and receipts, couldn't you? 
Yeah, the exactly. Grunt work, that's icky work. You don't want to do that. Or the filling in the the check uh, check information. Like yeah, yeah. On QuickBooks, like putting the names, they could do that for me as well. Yeah, that's sucky. Yeah, which is the the there it it's not a difficult account. It's just a lot of tedious work. Yeah, it's high volume, isn't it? With lots of a lot yeah. of icky stuff and high volume. Mm -hmm. mm. And but it could, you know, it's a new house in the making, isn't it? If you yeah. get it right. Mm -hmm. And I want to get in, you know, this is kind of my opportunity to be like, hey, let me take over the books since you want to fire your CPA. You don't have to pay this, the firm to do it. You pay me to do yeah. it. And then I can connect you with the CPA that'll do your taxes and you can have your reporting in-house and whenever, because I know that recently he asked the CPA like, Hey, I need these reports for to refinance his house or something. And she didn't get back to get them back to him for like a month. But he wow. asked me for them and I had them in two seconds. So oh, that's <laughs> that's shiny new. Yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. And and to be fair, if they have this much turnover, surely they should have a, um not just a CPA, but a financial advisor too, right? To make sure yeah, they that's I'm trying to get them to they're they're great friends of mine I've worked with them for years but I'm trying to get them to understand that they're growing so much that they kind of need more of an in-house they need to be a bit more department. grown up with their money yeah yeah they need more of an in-house accounting department than outsourcing it at this point yeah well, then do, do you want to be that person that goes in there I would love to be the person that you know does the bookkeeping for them all in-house and they're kind of all over the place and I I love them to death and just want to make sure that they're going in the right direction but I also yeah. want to make sure that financially it's my it's you know gonna benefit me as well I don't I have I have a tendency of saying like oh yeah I'll do that but because I like you as a friend and then I'm not getting paid <laughs> properly because you know yeah, you don't want to shoot yourself in the foot and then be working 80 hour weeks for nothing, right? Mm -hmm. Not why you do this. Hmm. Exactly. Okay. So here's a here's an easy way that you can kind of charge a really good monthly price or flat rate mm -hmm. with the relationship that you have now and with being able to expand um, really quickly. So you could do two ways. You can either do like a per restaurant kind of fee like you're talking about, but mm -hmm. at the current price point you're at, they'd be like, well, why can't we just do the same $400 a month that we're already paying you times seven? It's $3,500 a month. That's that's okay. Some people, it's their biggest client. If instead we're looking at this, so 16 hours per restaurant times seven restaurants, mm -hmm. that's actually really good. And what you could do is maybe after like a month or three months of doing it hourly, then you can tell them, you know, we can just baseline it at this is the flat monthly price. Mm -hmm. So now after that, you can kind of take your foot off the gas and not have to work quite as much. That is that is one main way that we we do encourage people to do it. Or if you can, like, how likely do you think that they'd be that if you said, hey, man, like we're totally undercharging, like can you please give me $700 a month per restaurant? Like they'd be like, yeah, let's do it. Um, I think that he would be open to that if he understand, understands that I would be doing what the CPA firm would be doing minus the taxes, you know, like minus filing your taxes for you. Like his sales tax, I can fi file. Um, and his franchise tax, I can file. But, you know, just as far as tax returns goes, because I don't think he understands that when you hire a CPA firm, they have somebody that does the bookkeeping in the firm. And then the CPA just deals with their, their like ta tax returns and any tax questions that they have, you know. For him, I think he, he thinks that I'm just scanning in their receipts every month and keeping them on file for him. <laughs> <laughs> and where are you going to meet them are you going to meet them at a restaurant like where you guys can be eating is it going to be just like you guys are like business business inside of their office like can you show them actually how much stuff you that you do yeah i'm going to meet them i'm going to go to their restaurant we always meet at their restaurants okay 
But I can take, I take my laptop and show him everything. Okay. Yeah, because if you can show him how much work it is, mm -hmm. it's it's really going to be beneficial to us to be able to do that. So one six times seven, hundred twelve. About hundred twelve times. Yeah, I mean these. There's no reason he can't afford it. It's just a matter of making sure that I know what because he's going to tell me. Okay, come up with a number. And, and let that's, me know. That's what we're doing right now. I already, yeah, I already know how his conversation is going to go. <laughs> yeah. So, it, it, I guess the, the question that I'm, answer, that I'm asking you is, do you mind working hourly to flatline it first? Or do you want to give him like what is a flat, what's a fair flat rate? Um, I would want to give him a flat rate because he's going to think like, if you want to do it hourly to figure it out, how do you not know by now what it should be, you know? Okay. So I see what you're saying. So, mm -hmm. I mean, she hourly, we do know what it is 67 and 20. Mm -hmm. Like that. That is your number. Okay. That's the number that we're shooting for. Okay. For but months, based yeah. on the current, yeah, but based on the current way that it's pronounced, if he asks you like to break it down, <laughs> then it's going to come out, you know, to way more than what you're currently charging him per restaurant. Mm hmm yeah and I mean they're on restaurant number seven but I know they're already adding a number eight <laughs> and a number nine they yeah. are just popping up left and right so if you, you take could, this you so would you be doing more duties than you are now um I don't think so um, it would just be now I'm kind of just the bookkeeper in the background. So I do everything, but he does, he only calls me when he needs to see something. Um, I don't have like the original tax returns from his first year of business. So I don't have the books that go back four years, which I would need if I took this on, I would say, Hey, you know what? Your CPA needs to give me all the files that they have. Or the, all yeah. the, uh, you know, the, the QuickBooks file that they have so I can transfer it over and they have, um, you know, they have big assets, you know, kitchen furniture or kitchen equipment and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. Um, so there's little details that would need to be kind of up. My game needs to be upped, but, but as far as how much more time it would take, I don't think so. Unless, unless um, we went into a full accounting department where all the bills for all the restaurants are coming to one spot and being sent out by me but the restaurants all pay their own bills individually so i was just thinking how you'd go from 400 to 900 i mean you, you could say that when you first offered the 400 the duties were less than they are now you just haven't raised the rate Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah it sounds and like thinking, it's free doesn't it yeah and also when I started it was my first year uh starting you know going off oh, on my business phone. yeah have you ever raised a monthly price on them and how many years have you been working with them just a year and no I've never raised it if they okay. add a new restaurant then I add another fee but that's it well. Yeah. Because base, it's basically going to be like our goal is is nine hundred dollars a store, or a restaurant, okay. whatever you're calling it, mm -hmm. is minimum. Okay, I'm going to take a picture of this. Okay. Yeah. Well, this makes sense to kind of give you give you a little bit more confidence in the numbers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. I was I was thinking around fifty five hundred. So that's. But basically, yeah, it works perfect for me for what I want to 
Yeah, because 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 I'm I'm more like in between like sixty three and sixty seven, so probably about sixty five hundred. Mm-hmm. Um, to be honest, like like um, this is this is weird. Don't tell anyone outside of the program. I've been leaning more towards hourly the longer I'm inside of this program. Like the longer I've, I've I coach people, mm-hmm. because when when I look at the guys are already at like two fifty, for example, like Mike. So he he has this one construction company, and the guy just spends money like crazy. So the first thing that we did was I said, okay, cool. So you're charging $125 an hour. Okay. Does he have an executive assistant? No. Does he have a bookkeeper? Yeah, he does, but I don't really like her. Okay. So if we can charge at least um, at least $40 an hour, it looks like there's going to be about three grand extra for if we bring in our own executive assistant. Yeah. Okay, cool. And then for the bookkeeper, let's see if we can um, get her removed. And she was getting paid four grand a month and it was broken down to hourly. So we basically just increased his revenue per client by about $7,000 per month, but he's breaking out hour by hour by hour because the person's like, okay, cool. That doesn't sound like it's that much mm-hmm. versus when we do like a flat rate, it's a little bit of a, of more stuff needs to go into it. So it's kind of like the longer that I'm in this and the more like of the higher level people that I'm speaking to, it's almost mm-hmm. easier to charge like hourly yeah but most people don't like hourly because that means they actually have to like keep working Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah. i just don't like the this this like i don't know the client not knowing exactly what they're gonna get yeah i mean i when i was doing hourly i would give them a range of like okay i'll stick within 10 to 15 hours and if i go over i'll let you know before i go over but then it's just I don't know. It's it's back and forth with me, I guess. Yeah, I mean, go ahead. What were you gonna say, Joanna? I I was gonna say that in in one of the um, like I'm new to this, Lizzie, right? So I'm still kind of finding my feet. But one of the um, justifications I'd heard for a flat rate, which made sense to me, is that if I offer you a flat rate, it it includes X number of services. So whether it be like in this scenario. If I give you the flat rate for 6,300, that's seven stores, X number of transactions per month, so many bank accounts or loans or whatever. If that should change, then your price will increase or reduce depending on which way it changes. But if I can do, if I'm quoting you for 6,300 a month and it's it takes me 40 hours, whether I, and if I come up with some um, great innovations where I'm actually I'm actually only doing 30 hours work, but still producing the same level of activity or pro- providing the same level of service. Um, and, and that to me makes sense. Cause if I'm, I'm always looking for solid shortcuts like automations. And to me, I would shoot myself in the foot charging hourly because the more I know your business, the less hours it takes me to do, you know, if I'm clocking on yeah. clocking all the time. Mm-hmm. And I think if, whereas if I said for me personally, okay, as they are today two bank accounts you know paypal 100 transactions a month this is the flat rate and then if it goes up by say 20 percent or down by 20 percent then we can talk again in 90 days which is kind of how i've structured my proposals up until now bryce is that it's a 90-day review you know and it can go either way you know but yeah, that's the thinking anyway mm-hmm. yeah that's which is, is is a good thought and stuff. It's just kind of like, I'm I'm always worried about the upside. What happens when they're already at seven restaurants, they get keep getting more and more and more. It, it's kind of like, I, I like being, because in, in the past I, I've gotten burned by not really thinking about the upside, like what happens when they grow, what happens when everything kind of increases. So that's kind of why I'm like moving more towards the hourly, but if you if you want to do more of the monthly fee, then you can say this, like you, you can do your your six three hundred dollars. And if he ever asks like that, you can also just break it down by hours. Like you know how many hours it's gonna take. Mm-hmm. It takes you a hundred uh, sixteen hours per month per restaurant. Mm-hmm. So one hundred twelve. So you you have both you have both um kind of there. So yeah, so you could try the $700 per, uh, I'm sorry, $900 per store. 
They'll probably say yes. Like they're gonna say yes. Yeah. I mean, yeah, these are multi, these restaurants are millions and millions of dollars that they're making. Yeah, especially since they're still undercharging a little bit. The, yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, the thing is with them too though is, I mean, which this is gonna be easy for me to, to explain to them is that their CPA was charging them $400 a month also. Mm, yeah. But then I'm gonna tell them like, yeah, they were charging you $400 a month and then look how that relationship turned out. You fired them. <laughs> you don't want them anymore. Yeah. They're not doing the work. Yeah. It's too much work to be under this this kind of amount. Mm -hmm. um, it just gets too overwhelming, just takes away from you know my ability to be able to do this more effectively. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. So, yeah, just, just do it. Yeah, I think that's a good number to to start them off with. And I mean, we can go. I, I'm sure you'll go back and forth with me on it anyway. So, so what you could do is maybe try and do a thousand dollars per month per restaurant. Mm -hmm. If he's gonna hem and haw, you can go and reduce it by like fifty dollars per month per restaurant. You probably have two drop downs. Mm -hmm. And end up at nine hundred yeah because like a negotiation you never, you never want to like haggle on the number starting on the number you want mm -hmm. so if you have to we gotta at least go about a thousand dollars per store um seven grand how do you do when it comes to negotiation do you feel like strong or do you get kind of pushed around really easily Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I think it depends on who I'm talking to. Like these, like them, for instance, I'm really comfortable with him. So I'm comfortable negotiating with him. Oh, is he kind of like one of those guys where, or people where you can just kind of joke and be a little obnoxious when you're yeah. giving your points? To... Yeah, okay. I've been friends with them for four years now. And they're really all about like trustworthy employees and trustworthy staff and i'm like dude you just i think it's important yeah. for them to really just start and yeah like you yeah. said earlier grow growing up in your business i mean grown up with your business now <laughs> yeah so okay dude let's let's shoot for a thousand dollars per month per store okay. and yeah he'll probably like you might even overestimate it. you might be like okay yeah let's do it yeah that sounds good. When Maybe are they that. firing that other person? What was that? When are they firing the other person? Uh, I think as soon as she wraps up 2021 books and uh, yeah, they're going to let her go. How long, like how long before that is like a couple of weeks, a couple months? I don't know. I'm going to, I'll ask him when I get there, but yeah, she's, it's a, it's a firm that he, he's been working with for four years. So Okay, it's a firm. All right, cool. Mm -hmm. Well, let's go get this money, okay? That sounds like a plan. <laughs> awesome. Thank you for your help. Excellent. You're welcome. Thank you as well, Joanna, for your perspective. It's always Thank great to have other welcome. people's it's perspective. Good to see, well. Yeah, it's, it's good to see the real life versions of stuff. Yeah. 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 Nice problem I mean, like, to have, though. <laughs> yeah. That is true. It is a nice problem to have. So I'm super excited for you. Let me know how this thing goes. Yeah. Um, and one thing too, don't get offended no matter what the person says. Mm -hmm. Because especially if it's like an old timer that they're unsophisticated when it comes to stuff, like he may shoot you like a, um, not discouraging, but just like a uneducated response. Mm -hmm. But you need to expect that and then kind of walk him through why what you're doing okay yeah sounds good okay cool awesome and then also also know what is the lowest that you're willing to go for for this thing as well okay okay just in case he tries to just in case they lowball you like you gotta know mm -hmm. when you what is your walk away point okay um because it sounds like it's your your walk away point right now 400 times seven is at least, let's say like times, at least 4,200 is kind of the walk away point. 
Okay. That makes sense. It's like 600 H. Yeah, that's pretty low even. Um, yeah, no. yeah, because exactly at this point for me, it's like either I go all in with you guys and you really pay me to do the job that you are needing and need to get done. Or I have to just let you guys go as a client as well, because I can't afford to be investing all this time for $400 a month. Yeah. I need to invest that time, you know, elsewhere with finding new clients or whatever it is. Cause I mean, that's, uh, you know, two grand a month as of now, but I think in the long run over, overall, if I have to let them go as a client then that's just what it is. Yeah. Awesome. That's called the swagger bonus. The swagger bonus. Why, why are you charging me extra money? Because I can't afford to not do this. Like, yeah, I at the and that's where I'm at. I can't afford to keep working so much for so little. Yeah. Awesome. So, how do you feel? You feel confident about this? Yeah, I do. Actually, I think this uh, conversation helps a lot, and it was perfect timing because I have to. They just texted me during this meeting to go over there. <laughs> awesome. I kind of awesome. been like planning it in my head because they texted me about a week ago already, letting me yeah. know that what the status was. So. Yeah. And that's the one thing to note too, is like money is not like a real thing. Mm -hmm. Like people who don't have money, they get really nervous about it and think it's like so much money, but it's like, it's not that much money. Yeah. It's only 80 grand. <laughs> and they, I mean, they, they do a lot. Awesome. So. <laughs> they have it. They. Oh yeah. Of course they have it and they can get access to it even if they don't have it mm -hmm. people will get a loan to pay you mm. awesome well hey guys i'm gonna get out of here i have a call in probably about three minutes um okay. but yeah any other questions that's it thanks cool. so much you're welcome thanks. take care good luck thank you good have luck. a good talk one. to you all right bye-bye